Howdy guys, welcome to another episode of Porco's Diesel Garage. Behind me here on the trailer, I uh, have a 1982 Mercedes 300 SD that uh, I just picked up yesterday. And uh, I got it for only $500. It doesn't run however, but it's in really nice shape. So uh, hopefully I can get it running again. Um, the guy I got it from bought it from someone else in non-running condition thinking he could fix it and I think the story is that uh, it was driving on the highway and it, it died for some reason and he hasn't been able to get it started since. I think uh, he changed some fuel filters on it and put new glow plugs in it and a few other things but uh, still couldn't get it going. So I'm gonna go take a look at this car. Um, I'll show it to you guys and uh, then we're gonna get working on it and hopefully I can get it started again. So we'll see. So here it is, 1982 300SD. It's in really nice shape. If you look real close, there's a few small little rust spots like down here, but overall this car came from Texas as you can see on the license plate there. Um, and there's very little rust on this car, which is really cool. Um, they're just getting really hard to find without much rust. Usually you find a lot of rust around the wheel wells here. And that actually is looking pretty, pretty well. Um, and down at the bottom, it just looks really good. The paint on it even is still really nice. You can see like a little rust spot here, but for the most part, it is in really good shape. So I'm really excited about that. Um, this car is definitely worth saving. Um, usually when I look at cars I look underneath the door and usually it's all rusted like throughout here this car there's no rust there at all down here usually you find lots of rust not the, not the case with this car usually I lift up the carpets and look down below usually find rust there but this one looks pretty good shape so interior is pretty pretty decent seats are a little uh, need a little work especially the driver's seat here overall this car is looking pretty nice it's got some big aftermarket speakers in the back and some kind of uh, stereo system that's not original missing a little trim piece over here that's broken off but overall in pretty nice shape. The headliner isn't sagging or anything. Here you have the back seat. It's a little bit dirty, but other than that, it's actually in pretty good shape. Looks like maybe the windows don't work because the switch is uh, popped out. But yeah, I'll do a quick, quick walk around here of this car but it looks really nice. Turbo diesel, look underneath here. And there's not much rust or anything. It's, it's really, really nice clean car. Tires on it are bad. You can see how bad this tire is. It's about to blow up. So. Uh, definitely need new tires for it, but uh, wheels look nice. And uh, yeah, overall, just a really nice car. So, we're gonna pop the hood and uh, we're gonna tr get working on this car and uh, see if I can uh, get it running again. Alright, so here's the engine compartment. The guy took out the uh, air filter housing for some reason. Maybe because it's loose, what happens a lot is uh, that this bracket cracks. It actually looks like it's securely attached, so I don't know. It is sitting in the back in the trunk, um, so hopefully uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I can just put it back together. Other than that, it looks okay. It looks okay. It's a little uh, wet. I don't know if that's oil leaking or fuel or what's been going on. Looks like he replaced the fuel filter. There's that primary down there, and that's uh, the secondary fuel filter right over here. And the fuel return lines look newer. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see why it is not starting. 
I'm thinking usually with the diesels it's going to be a fuel issue. I just hope that uh, the reason he took off the air cleaner box is not because he was trying to uh, use either to spray in here to get it started. You definitely do not want to do that with a diesel. It's a good way to get a gasoline engine to fire up after it's been sitting for a long time. But uh, it could actually really damage a diesel engine. They, uh, they don't work the same way, so you don't ever want to do that. Um, but yeah, first thing I'm gonna do is see if I can get that air cleaner box installed again. I don't want it sucking up any dirt or dust or anything. And also I'm gonna test this battery since it's been sitting for uh, probably about a year or so since the last time it was driven. So um, I bet the battery is gonna be low. The lights on the interior are still coming on, so it's not completely dead. I can probably just charge it up and, and reuse the battery. It actually looks fairly new, which is nice because they're expensive. So I'll probably take that one out and put a different battery in it. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Got a trunk opened up here. There's that air cleaner box and uh, a bunch of junk. Got a whole stack of uh, receipts, like uh, all the maintenance and repairs and everything that has been done to this car. So that's kind of cool. Unfortunately, there's no owner's manual, but at least I got those. So it'll be cool to look through there and uh, see what all has been done to this car. I don't think it has that many miles on it either. I forgot to look. Let's see here. So yeah, just over 200,000. 200,000 and 289, I think, if you can see it. So that's that's nothing for these diesels. So yeah, I'm gonna go through here, clean that up a little, put the air cleaner box back together and uh, keep, keep working on it. Well, here. I'm finding out a little more about this car. Um, actually, this bracket is broken right here. There's supposed to be another arm that comes out. That's, uh, that is right here is the piece that broke off. And also all of these bushings that are supposed to hold this air cleaner uh, housing in place. They're all shot, they're all completely broken. Except for one in the back here. That is what they're supposed to look like. But since this arm is broken off too, I'm gonna have to take that all out. Thankfully I have a brand new one. Um, that I bought for 300D originally. Just the new bushings and everything. But I think it's, it's gonna work on this one as well. It's the same engine, so it should be the same. Although there are a couple different styles, but it looks like this one will be the same. So I'm gonna try and replace that so I can mount the uh, air cleaner housing back in place. It actually had a brand new air filter in it, so that is good. Um, I also found out the fan shroud is missing and I was in the trunk and I'm looking here and there's a new radiator in it and this is new as well so that is pretty cool I was going through some of the receipts and there's literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars in repairs that they put into this car um, plus the sales receipt for four thousand five hundred dollars that somebody paid for this car in 2017 I believe so I think I got a really good deal on it, as long as I can uh, get it running again. I'm starting to clean up the engine a little bit as well. And uh, this breather tube here, I think one of the reasons why it was so dirty is that I was missing this clam right here, so it was really loose on here. And all the oil was probably, because that connects right there, so all the oil was probably spraying all over the place here because it didn't have a, a, a hose clamp on it. So we'll fix that and uh, yeah, replace this bracket and then we get working on the fuel system here. Well, I got the air filter housing put back together. Everything is cleaned up here. And uh, I had to add some engine oil to it. It was really low. I have checked all the fuel lines, make sure they're nice and tight. Um, one of the injectors was really loose actually. This might be why it's kind of wet down there. Checked all the glow plugs with the ohm tester and they seem to be checking out. Um, Use the primer pump to get some fuel in there, make sure we're getting fuel to the engine. So uh, I'm gonna try and crank it over now and uh, see if we can get it started. It'll probably take a few tries. I might have to loosen up all the fuel lines, but uh, we'll give it a try at least and see. There we go.
Look like light is coming on there. Alright. Well, it sounds like it wants to start. Got some smoke coming from over there now. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure where the smoke was coming from, but I'm gonna give it another try here. Let's see what happens. Trying to give it a little fuel. See some smoke coming from the right there again, kind of from the turbo or something. This is weird. Well, I just cracked all the injectors one by one and then tightened them again, and there was fuel coming out of all of them. So I'm gonna try and start it up again now. This is the first time after doing that. Still nothing. Still keep getting some smoke from over, uh, kind of on the back side of the engine. I don't know where it's coming from, really. For some reason, as soon as I Turn the ignition to the on position, this fan is running. This is weird. That's uh, only supposed to come on when the engine is really hot, so that is kind of odd. I wonder if there's some kind of weird electrical issue uh, that we're having here, and it's, may, it might not even be fuel related. I don't know. I'm making some progress. I got it to uh, start up and run for about two seconds, and then it died again. Gonna give it another try here. See what happens. Oh, I just did exactly the same thing I did earlier. Run for like two seconds and then died again. Can't uh, can't keep it running though. I guess I'll keep working on it, but at least it's turning over and starting up now. Well, it is the next day. I worked on it till it uh, got too dark and too cold out yesterday. At least I got it to uh, start up. It just wouldn't stay running for more than one or two seconds. So I've been uh, asking for some advice from a friend and uh, doing some research online on what it could be that is causing it to shut off so uh, so quickly. Uh, one of the things I read about is that maybe it could be that the breather hose is clogged. Um, the way you can bypass that is just trying to start it without the oil cap on. I tried to do that yesterday as well. That was not my problem. Um, another common cause I, uh, that my friend told me about and that I read some about online as well is the, uh, the vacuum shutoff valve on these cars. Um, this is the vacuum control valve right here and it's right below there. It's, I'm kind of pointing at it right now but you can't really see it very well. It is this uh, brown line that goes in there that controls it. Um, so I'm going to try and disconnect that and then uh, start it and see if it will keep running. One thing I did notice while looking at these is that this vacuum line, this one right here, was loose going into the uh, control module right here. So I hooked that one back up and I'm actually going to try and start it uh, this way beforehand. So that, that could be another cause of it. It's, uh, definitely not good for that line to not be hooked up so um, I'm actually gonna try that first if that doesn't work I'll disconnect that brown line on the bottom that will eliminate the uh, vacuum controlled shutoff valve from being able to actuate or to do its job so uh, yeah hopefully that will fix it if not I guess we'll keep working on it what I did yesterday is just uh, loosen up all these injectors one at a time it's a 17 mil wrench and then i tried cranking them for about five seconds and uh, i was getting fuel coming out of all of them and eventually there were no more air bubbles on them so i think the fuel system has been bled properly and like i said it did fire up and run for about one or two seconds so maybe it's vacuum related and uh, I can get it started up here. Alright, so I'm first going to give it a try. Um, 
just with that figure in line that was loose hooked back up again. It was also only 20 degrees last night and it's still like around freezing right now. This never really helps for starting a diesel. So I'm just cycling the Globlux twice right now. Um, I did have the battery charger hooked up to it yesterday when I... Well, that's a weird sound. Huh. Well, that was really weird. I'm gonna give it one more try and see if it does the same thing again. Um, it was just making a weird noise instead of trying to start up. Oh. Now it almost started there. I'll give it a few minutes and then uh, I'll try it again. Alright, I'll let it sit just a little bit. I'm gonna try and uh, start it up one more time here. If that doesn't do it, I'm just gonna disconnect that fake one line from the fuel shut up and give that a try. Uh, that doesn't sound good. There might be something going on with the starter acting up. I'm gonna try this again, this time with the uh, fuel shut off solenoid or uh, fuel shut off valve disconnected. Unfortunately, well, I've been trying to start it over and over again and uh, the battery got kind of tired so I hooked up the, my jumper pack up to it again, our battery charger and uh, put this fresh battery in it and then I started it up and it actually ran for about three or four seconds. So I guess we're making some kind of progress. I'm gonna start it again now. I just uh, primed the fuel pump again, the hand pump. There we go, we're getting oil pressure, it's running. Giving it some throttle. Oh, this is cool, it's running now. I have to stay on the throttle to keep it running though. Too bad. Trying to slowly let off the trolley here. I'm still have my foot down on the trolley though. Slowly let off and see what happens, see if we can keep it running. Uh, I think it's gonna die if I let go. Uh, it's, it's idling a little a little too uh a little too low I think. Cool, we got it running again. I think I'm gonna shut off the video for now and uh, I'll see how long I can keep it running. Well, as you can see, my foot is no longer on the throttle. It's running by itself now. But uh, it seems to be uh, idling up and down a little on its own. So I don't know what's causing it. I got a little bit of smoke on from there too. But it's running by itself right now. That's quite a bit of smoke coming out the exhaust earlier. There's still smoke coming down there. I also uh, opened this up a little just in case uh, that was maybe causing it, not to start. So I don't know for sure if that helped or not. But it's running now, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna see uh, if it has any blow by if I open the oil cap here. Oh, it's got quite a bit of blow by, unfortunately. It is dancing quite a bit. Not the worst I've seen, but uh, I 
not great either. It's been running for a few minutes. You can see the oil pressure has came down just a little bit. For some reason, the RPM gauge earlier was way up at 6,000, which obviously is not the case, but uh, smoking quite a bit still. But it's also uh, it's pretty cold still, and uh, it's probably been about two years since its last ran. I saw a sticker that uh, from when it died on the highway and state patrol put a sticker on it to remove the car or it was going to get towed and it had a date in 2018 on it. So I'm assuming it's been about two years since this car last ran. I'll probably do a diesel perch on it and see if we can get uh, that idle to smooth out a little. I'll also kind of close this cap again, see if that had anything to do with it. I doubt it. but. Could sometimes be an issue. Well, it's not dying yet, so that probably wasn't it. Also, uh, for some reason, I noticed here that the battery cable was, uh, or the, sorry, the alternator cable was disconnected. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. And the connection on there uh, looks kind of bad. Yeah, it's running all right though. This is pretty cool. I wish it didn't have as much blow by. See how it has uh, come down a little now that it's been idling for a little bit. Yeah, it's still about the same. Just a little throttle here. Still have this cable disconnected to the fuel shutoff valve, so uh, maybe they could have helped us. It maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it just needed some more fuel priming and a new battery to get it going again. But uh, yeah, keep running. Sounds all right. Without running no diesel, sounds like. Gonna keep it running for a little bit and then I'll see if I can take it off the trailer. I can drive it over to my shop here and uh, put it inside and I can work on some other issues that it has. I also noticed this hose right here is really stiff. My next thing was going to be replace this. It is not the uh, original hose that's supposed to be on there. There's supposed to be one on there that uh, expands a little. It's like a, a cigar hose, I think is what they call it. And it just has a regular fuel hose on it. That's the, it's the fuel return line. And it should have that expandable hose on it. So um, it is running without it. So that wasn't my issue, but I will be replacing it. Well, the car's been uh, running now for about 15 minutes or so. It's at uh, 80 degrees now. It's about normal temperature for uh, for idling. You can see the oil pressure has came down a little again. So it's maybe slightly low, but it's it's normal for for just idling. Um, I don't know if my RPM cage works. I'm gonna give it just a little throttle and see. You can see the oil pressure come back up. This is good. Um, don't think my RPM cage is working. Pretty common on these. Um, I'm sure I'll be finding a lot more issues with it. Also, it looks like the low fuel light is on for some reason. Um, still smoking a little. It's cleared up a little bit though. It's not as bad anymore. I better run some diesel parts through it. This uh, car is going to run a lot better again. It's been, been sitting for at least three years now. So You can also uh, even right now, the idle has smoothed out quite a bit, so uh, open this up again. That's a little bit less than before. Maybe. I think it's slightly less. But uh, yeah, I have no idea what happened to this car. 
It might be that it was run too low on oil and that's why it died. It might have something to do with uh, the alternator because I don't know why it's disconnected. And the plug on it is, uh, it's, the wires are like exposed because half of the plug is like broken off. So I'm gonna have to replace that. Right now it's just not hooked up to the alternator. So obviously we wouldn't want to drive it very far that way without charging the battery. And uh, now I look underneath the car. You can see some smoke kind of coming up from uh, right behind the air cleaner housing. There's a little exhaust leak there. And uh, the exhaust is just kind of rusted. You can see right down here. I actually can't see it right now, but earlier there was some smoke coming out from the exhaust underneath the car as well. So it's, it's going to need some work, but uh, it's running pretty good now. And uh, finding one of these. This, uh, the body in such nice shape, you know, almost no rust or anything. That is really cool for only 500 bucks. I found the receipts that somebody paid four and a half thousand for this car in uh, 2017. So I think I did really well. I'm really happy it's running again. Uh, once I get all the other issues uh, figured out on this and get those fixed, I'll do another update video. But uh, that will be it for this video for now. At least it's running. I'm gonna try and get it off my trailer and uh, drive it in the shop and uh, I'll keep working on it. Thanks for watching and uh, if you haven't already, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. One last thing for this video. I just hooked up that uh, round cable right there again. Or hose, taking hose to the shutoff valve and the car didn't die so that wasn't the issue um, so I really don't know exactly why I couldn't get it started earlier but uh, I'm happy it's running now I'm gonna do one more thing and that's turn the car off and then see if it will fire up again uh, let's have issues yep. so that uh, fuel shutoff is actually working because it's turning off with the key and let's see if it'll start up again hopefully there we go sweet all right that will do it for the video thanks for watching